Can women be pastors, bishops, overseers in the church? Ooh, I'm gonna mess up your theology this morning. Stay tuned, we'll talk about it. God bless you, friend. Thank you for joining me this morning on Morning Nuggets. This is yours truly, Pastor Nate, and I am going to tackle a social controversial issue this morning. Friend, I challenge you to study the Word of God because I am going to debunk a lot of myths about gender in the church. Now, we talked about gender as it pertains to hair. Men having long hair and women having short hair. We talked about that. But now we're going to talk about church leaders. The reason why I'm tackling these issues is because they seem to be a big issue in our world and in our church. And a lot of times we bring all this legalism in the church and it causes a lot of confusion. And it categorizes others like genders. And it makes one gender feel more inferior than the other. When God actually wants us to come together and allow anybody he chooses to use to be used. Let's talk about it this morning. Now let's go way back to the beginning. It says, let us make man. This is what God is saying. Let us make mankind anything that resembles or looks like man, whether it be a man or whether it be a woman. That's what mankind is, humanity, men, women, boy, boys and girls, everything that's human. Then in that scripture, it says, so they may what? Rule. What? Even at the beginning? Now, we know Adam was the head because he was created first. Man is the head. I can't dispute that. But in this instance, God said, let us make mankind, man and woman, so that they may rule. And verse 27 says he created male and female. So it didn't just say in that scripture that man is the only gender that can rule. It says male and female. That was back in the beginning. Those of you who have issues with women leaders, you need to talk to God because that's how he created. He created both of them to have authority. Ooh, mm, I know you don't like me already. Oh, let's go some more. Judges 4 and 5, we see that Deborah was a judge. She was a civil leader, just like your local judge. The judge at the Supreme Court, maybe it's not that sophisticated, but just think in those terms. Do you have only men judges? No, you have women judges. Deborah was a judge. Do you think women cases just came before her? No. There are men disputes. There are, there are women disputes. She was a judge. So she ruled those civil cases for both men and women woman. Not only was Deborah a judge, but she was also a prophetess. Mm. Oh my God in Zion. Now you may argue and say, well, Pastor Nate, in Corinthians, Paul told the women to be silent. You know, man is the head. And again, he's tackling culture. The reason why, if you do extra research, the reason why he told those women to be silent was because they were speaking out of order. Shoot, if the men were speaking out of order, he probably would have told them to be quiet and then we would have made a whole theology. Men can't speak. <laughs> Friend, we got to understand the culture and the setting in which the writer or the author was addressing. That's why he told those women to be silent. We just took it and applied Women can't preach in church. Women can't speak. The Bible says women should be silent. Well, as Deborah being a judge, do you think she was silent? No, her job required her to talk. That's why she was a judge. At the beginning, God created male and female to rule. Can you rule in silence? 
I don't know what kind of language they spoke, but whatever language they spoke, I'm sure it was understood by animals and everything or everybody else that was under them. Come on, y'all. Let's make it make sense. Now, you may also argue and say, well, Pastor Nate, 1 Timothy 3 and 2 says that if anybody desires to be an overseer, some translations say, or a bishop, and we let that word bishop just cause us to have a conniption when we're talking about women, but it's an overseer, overseer of churches. You may say, well, Pastor Nate, he was addressing men. Yes, he was addressing men, but if you do extra study, you know why he was addressing men? It was most common for men to be in leadership roles at that time. <laughs> That's why he addressed the men and he gave the qualification. You must be the husband of one wife and all the other things because it was mostly men. I'm sure if there were women leaders, he would have laid out qualifications for women. But because mostly men held those church leadership roles, he laid out qualification for a man. Paul was not a sexist person. He was not involved in bigotry. Oh, my God. Have mercy. So in that scripture, it wasn't forbidding a woman to be an overseer. And I know y'all ain't going to like this here, but you better study the scripture. It didn't say a woman cannot be an overseer or a bishop. Ooh, let me duck. He was dressing the men because mostly men held those roles. Uh-oh. So again, he was dealing with the culture. If women can't be in leadership roles, what did I just read before? There are many other scriptures that demonstrate women being in leadership roles. Friend, that's why I tell you, stay in the word because man been saying things for years and it's not correct. Get in the word of God yourself and ask God to give you the revelation. Mm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Now, there's another scripture, Romans 16 and 7, where Paul acknowledged Janiah or Junia uh, as an apostle. So those of you who don't think women can be uh, apostles or, you know, leading from that aspect, then look at Romans 16 and 7. And Paul acknowledged that in Romans. So if Paul had a problem with women leadership in Corinthian, and if he had problems with women leadership when he told Timothy about the bishop or the overseer, then why did he acknowledge Janiah or Junior as an apostle or a, women, a woman leader? Make it make sense. Friend, listen, I know this probably spurred some conversation. If you... I caused some confusion. I hope I did not pray that I made myself very clear. I'll come back and do some more. In fact, I may make a live on Tuesday night if necessary. I gave you scriptures where women were leaders. Friend, thank you for joining me this morning. I pray that this exhortation blessed you. In the meantime, in between time, be at peace and not in pieces. Till next time.